afternoon everybody, Steve Hollander here from Micro Ministries and yes, today we're going to be sharing a message with you and um, a word, a teaching on, we'll, on, on who you are in Christ, your identity. So yes, let's pray together. Thank you Father that your word remains forever and ever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will not pass away, Father. Thank you that you are the one who opened our eyes so that we can see the wondrous things from your word. Thank you that you opened our understanding and our minds that we may comprehend and understand your holy scriptures. Thank you that you opened our ears to hear. Thank you that your word, when we eat your word, your word is made joy and rejoicing of our hearts. We pray that for everybody listening. In Jesus' name, amen. So, your identity in Christ our King. This is uh, the message, and we would love to, um, you know, make you part of this. So, whenever, you know, I'm making a proclamation according to the scripture, I want you to also say it after me. So remember, Malachi 3, the Lord says, I am the Lord and I do not change. So he is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. So I'm going to say, make a statement. You are what the word of God says you are. Now you can say it with me. I am what the word of God says I am. I am what the word of God says I am. You are also called of God to be his saint. So if we look at the scriptures for that, where do we find that? If we look at the Bible, go to Romans 1. Romans 1. So this is the letter to us as a believers. And it says here, you all are called to be saints, now, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, peace from our Father, God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So you are called to be saint. So you can also read in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12. So it was there. Also, let's go to that. Let's see the scripture always good to go to the scripture. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9 and you'll find there it says God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. So you were called for terms and 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 and here it says that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and into his glory. Amen. So, say it after me. I am called of God to be his saint. I am called of God. Amen. You are a servant of Jesus Christ when you repent. So you can say it with me. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. And in Matthew 5 verse 13, Matthew 5 verse 14, Ephesians 5 verse 8, uh, the Lord is saying to us that you are the salt, you are the light. So you can repeat with me. I am the light. I am the light. I am the salt. I am the salt. Okay. So we're going to the next truth of who you are, your identity in him. You are a son or a daughter of Abraham. So let's go to that scripture. Why can I say that? Because you cannot say anything that the word of God does not say. So Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Um, and it talks about our faith. So... Let's just read that verse. So, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, 
not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So here we can see Abraham is the father of all of us who are in the faith. And then you are the seed. Let's go to Galatians, Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. And you will see there, it says, and if you are Christ's, then, so if you belong to Christ, no? then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So I can make a proclamation and say, you are the seed of Abraham. Now, where else can we find this in the Word of God? Look at Psalms, Psalms chapter 105, Psalms chapter 105, verse 6, he says here, O seed of Abraham, his servant, remember Abraham is also a servant of God, you, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, so you, children of Israel, you are his chosen ones. And Isaiah, if you look at Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah chapter 41, who is he talking about here? Verse 8, you will see here it says, but you, O Israel, my servant, you are my servant, eh? Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. So, that is another confirmation. And then Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, we'll find here a very interesting, interesting verse. It says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say to Abraham and his seeds. So it's only one seed now. So it's not many, but one seed, and to your seed, who is Christ. Now. So Christ is the seed of Abraham. Um, and then in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 16, we also find, let's, let's just read that, for indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. So our help comes from him because we are the seed of Abraham. Now we've got all the confirmation there. Now we can make a pro proclamation. Say, Abraham is my father in the faith. Abraham is my father in the faith. I am the seed of Abraham. I am the seed of Abraham. Amen. You are the son or the daughter of the light. So what? where do we get that? Ephesians, here is another truth, Ephesians chapter 2, no, chapter 5, verse 8, and you'll find here it says, For you were once darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as the children of light. So we are children of light. And also, if, um, First Thessalonians Chapter 5, verse 5, very beautiful verse. You are the sons of light and the sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So, you are a son and a daughter of the light. So, make that proclamation. I am a child of the light. I am a child of the light. Amen. The next proclamation is you are a son or a daughter of the word. Now, how can we say that you are a son or a daughter of the word? The word must tell us that. Let's go to 1 Peter 1 verse 23. And you'll find there this truth. He says here, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of, we've been born again, of incorruptible seed through the word of God which lives and abides forever. So the word of God, we've been born again through the word. So we've been born from the word. So you can say, 
I am born of the word of God Almighty. I don't hear you. I am born of the word of God Almighty. Amen. So you are a son or a daughter of the Most High. Where do we find that in the scriptures? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and we find that in verse 18. And it says here, and this is God himself speaking, I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says Lord Almighty. So now you can make the proclamation. I am a child of the Most High. I am a child of the Most High. Amen. You are also more than a conqueror. Where do we get that? Romans 8 verse 37. So you might know the scripture. So we're just going to pro pro proclaim it. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. That's who you are. That's your identity. Another truth is you are chosen. So where do we find that? Let's go to John. The gospel of John. Let's see where we find that. Gospel of John. Verse 15. And this is two verses we're going to read in that 16 and 19. Let's, let's read here what it says. And this is the word of God speaking, Jesus Christ himself. He said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. So you are chosen, eh? And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask my father in my name, when, when, whatever you ask the father in my name, that he may give you now so let's read verse 19 it says if you were of the world the world would have loved you as its own but yet i you are not of the world but i chose you out of the world therefore the world hates you let's um so you can see there and ephesians 1 verse 4 it also says that you are chosen and first peter 2 verse 4 we find that as well so let's make the proclamation I am chosen. I am chosen. Amen. So we're going to see here. I just want to um, emphasize this because the next proclamation is also in that verse. So we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. It says, He has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame and before him in love so that is the truth take it for yourselves okay first peter 2 verse 4 this is the next um next truth let's listen it says coming to him as a living stone rejected by men but chosen by god and precious so we are living stones and we are precious. So you're going to make that also. Let's proclaim it. I am a living stone. I am a living stone. I am precious. I am precious. That is the truth. You are blessed. So where do we find that? Well, there's so many scriptures about that. But we're going to do, just go to this one. James 5 verse 11. Which talks about being blessed. And it says, Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. So you are one who endures and uh, you have heard the preservation of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. So I am blessed. I am blessed. Amen. You are loved. Now, if you read Jeremiah 31 verse 3, it says that you are loved with an everlasting love. I have loved you with an everlasting love. This is the father speaking. So, you can also proclaim it. I am loved. I am loved. And then I'm going to proclaim over you, you are forgiven. So, let's just go through that scripture. We're going to get it in the letter that John wrote to the, the believers. 1 John chapter 2, verse 12. And it says here, <clears throat> I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. So you can also proclaim it. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Amen. Then um, the another, another truth that I'm going to um, share with you that is part of your identity. You were purchased by his blood. So you can go and read that. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. You were purchased by his blood. 
so you can proclaim it with me. I am purchased by his blood. I am purchased by his blood. I am his possession. I am his possession. Bought by his blood. Bought by his blood. Amen. You are sanctified by his blood. So Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12, it says that we are sanctified. Now, So you're going to proclaim it. I'm sanctified by his blood. I am sanctified by his blood. Amen. You were washed and cleansed by his blood. So 1 John 1 verse 7, I'm going to um, proclaim it and then you're going to say it with me. I'm washed and cleansed by his blood. I am washed and cleansed by his blood. Amen. You are highly favored. Do you believe that? Luke 1 verse 2 and 28. This is where the angel was sent to Mary. And the in verse 28, he says, listen to these words. This is, this is amazing. He says, the angel said, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you. Okay, so you are highly favored. Now, that very same word um, we find in, in the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1. So, it's the very same Greek word. And if you read there, they've translated it to being accepted. So highly favored is the same word that the translators used to say that you are accepted. So he says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. But it's the same word, the Greek word that was, that was translated, highly favored one. So is also accepted. So the very same word. So you can make that proclamation. Say with me, I am highly favored. I am highly favored. I am accepted. I am accepted. Amen. The next proclamation is, you are the royal priesthood. So you find that in 1 Peter 2 verse 9. So we're going to read that because this is, this is a profound statement. And it's, a, it's awesome to, to take that so that you know who you are as a believer in Jesus Christ. So it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light this is this is so much of our, our identity so you are a royal priesthood i am a royal priesthood i am a royal priesthood amen you are part of his holy nation and um we're going to read this as well, Ephesians chapter 2. This is our identity. Remember, this is the letter to the believers. So those who believe, you know, um, this is our promise. This is, this is from Paul, and he's writing to the believers. Listen to what he says. Therefore remember, verse 11, that you once were Gentiles in the flesh, no? who are called... Um, the uncircumcised by which is this uh, is called the circumcised made by the flesh in the hands now, that at that time you were without christ so at some point when we didn't know him we were gentiles we were without christ being aliens from the commonwealth of israel strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope without god in this world wow that is where we were that is who he was, but we are no longer that. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Listen to this promises now. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. So remember, there was a separation between the Jew and the Gentile. Okay? And there were there were man-made laws to say that a Jew uh, is not to be, uh, you know, um, in the presence of a, of a Gentile, and Gentile is not to be in the presence of a Jew. But this is what Jesus has done. He has broken down that middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh, that is, the, 
the law of commandments ordained by and in ordinances those that is the the dogma that's the you know, the greek word dogma is the 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 man made laws there was there was laws that says that uh, you cannot come near with us you cannot pray with us you cannot you know that's man made laws so jesus came and he abolished that okay by what he did on the cross so as to create in himself one new man from the two thus making peace uh, that he might con reconcile both um, to god in one body through the cross thereby putting to death the enmity that that enmity was that was um, you know between uh, the gentiles us and the jews so in him there's you are a new creation a new man this is what he says and he says and he came and preached peace to you who were once far off now to those who were uh, um, and to those who were near uh, for through him we both have access by one spirit to the father now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners we are no longer gentiles but you are now fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of god having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets jesus christ him being the cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into holy temple in the lord in whom you also being builded up for a dwelling place of the of god in the spirit so this is very important you are now part of his holy nation okay so you can proclaim it i am part of his holy nation i am part of his holy nation amen your body is his temple so where do we get that we go to first corinthians chapter 6 first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 now this is very um there's so many scriptures but i'm i'm just going to read this one or do you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and you are not your own so proclaim it my body is his temple my body is his temple amen now revelation 17 verse 14 he calls the believers faithful so you are faithful so you can proclaim it i am faithful i am faithful now in romans 11 verse 17 it says you are grafted into the olive tree so romans romans uh, 11 he talks about us as gentiles being grafted in listen now and if some of the branches were broken off and you being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with them became a partaker uh, of the root and the fatness of the olive tree amen so and in the bible um, if you can do a bible search you will find that israel is the olive tree they are the congregation they are the the children uh, uh you know of, of israel so you can proclaim it i am grafted into the olive tree I am grafted into the olive tree. Okay, you are also part of his holy congregation. So if you read in, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 12, there's so many uh, scriptures, you know, about this, but we're just going to read this one. He says there, For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all one of one. For which reason he, that is Jesus now, is not ashamed to call them my brothers or brethren, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. I will sing to your praise. And it's the same word for congregation. It's been translated as congregation, assembly. You'll find many scriptures about that. So you can say, I am part of his holy congregation. I am part of his holy congregation. And then you are also part of his holy people. We've already um, seen that in uh, the letter that uh, uh, Peter wrote to the believers. And Romans 9 verse 25 confirms it as well. Um, so you can proclaim it. I am part of his holy people. I am part of his holy people. Amen. You are his beloved. So you can proclaim it. I am his beloved. I am his beloved. 
Amen. You are part of his holy assembly. Um, James 2, we're going to confirm that as well. James chapter 2, verse 2, it says here, um, let's have a look. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there also should come in a poor man with filthy clothes. So you are part of the holy assembly. Oh, I am part of his holy assembly. I am part of his holy assembly. Amen. You are part of his body. So Ephesians 3 verse 6, it says that we are part of his, we are members of his body. So I'm going to proclaim it and then you can say it after me. I am part of his body. I am part of his body. Amen. You are filled with his Holy Spirit. Let's look at that verse. Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, then we're going to end off here, verse, verse 18, and do not be drunk with wine, which is a, a dissipation, but be filled with his Holy Spirit, amen. So, let's proclaim it, I am filled with his Holy Spirit. I am filled with His Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I'm just going to end off with a scripture. This is the Word of God speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. It says, The Lord God, which is, which was, and which is to come, God Almighty. Um, all glory to our Father, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our Messiah. May you, um, you know, study more. Because in His Word, you will find who you are. And may you hold on to that and practice doing his good works that he's prepared for us. Amen. Have a good day further. May the Lord bless you on this day.